guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Male. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, Plus Size Woman Says Being Fat Doesn't Mean She Has to Settle for Mediocre Men. And a big shout out to Danny for sending me this article. And guys, what we have here is a woman who considers herself to be plus sized, okay? And in today's politically correct world, you can't say F-A-T anymore, or obese. You got to say plus size. But the reality is, you know, in my mind, plus size means some extra extra meat on the bones, some dr- junk in the trunk for a dude, some love handles, not obese. But in today's world, because God forbid anybody says anything to offend anybody, they got to use plus size for these big, gigantic 300 pound hippos. Okay. Plus size my ass. And this whole thing goes into her basically saying that she is entitled to top guys, that she just shouldn't have to settle for mediocre men. And I find this very funny because, God forbid, if a guy wrote an article in today's world and said basically that he, as well as guys like him, maybe guys that don't make a whole lot of money, that they shouldn't have to settle for mediocre women, what would happen to them? We all know. There, so there'll be some kind of social media outcry. There'd be uh, people calling to cancel the guy. Uh, maybe the media would start talking about him if, if it was if it went around and circulated enough. Women's groups would be raising holy hell, saying there's no such thing as a mediocre woman, right? But it's perfectly okay to do that with guys, right? But the, the sense of the just delusion out there is just unreal. And so I'm doing this, guys, just to point that out and point out the BS because, again, if a guy did this, he would be the bad guy. Women can have be picky. Women can have all these um, standards. But God forbid if a guy has standards, then he's a jerk, right? That's a bunch of bullshit. And she's also going to talk about here, guys, about obviously loving herself no matter what and all that. And I got no problem with somebody obviously not hating themselves. I don't want anybody going around hating themselves because of this or that. But you know what, guys? The fact that we not completely loving ourselves gives us incentive every day to get off our butts and actually make something of ourselves to, to improve ourselves, okay? If people that uh, didn't have a job didn't have any kind of income, just love themselves, you know, they would never get off their butts and get a job. If somebody uh, was overweight, but they had this idea they loved themselves, they're never going to do anything to lose that weight to become healthy. Because guess what? Newsflash, being morbidly obese, like she is, as you're going to see, is very detrimental to your health. Any medical doctor worth his money, worth his degree will tell you that, okay? But in today's world, it is offensive and not politically correct to basically say things like that. But I'm going to say I'm here. And also, I'm going to point out that, guess what, with that attitude, guess what, I don't think she has lines of guys waiting to get together with her. You know, the only guys that go for women like this, the big, big girls, are the small percentage of guys that actually are attracted to big women. And if they are, okay, to each their own. Or guys that are using them probably financially because they she comes from money or something like that. That's it, okay? But there girls like this with this attitude, this warped sense of reality, guess what? Time's gonna go by, they're not gonna have any men, and they're gonna blame guys for not wanting to be with women like that, right? We're we're gonna be the bad guy, just you watch. But anyhow, guys, I'm gonna go through her thing here. You're gonna just see just the, the, the delusion here. It's crazy, and again, how God forbid if we say something like this, well then we're the bad guys. So it starts off. A plus size woman has insisted that she won't lower her standards in love and relationships simply because of her size. She won't lower her standards. Okay. Teacher Megan Fisher, 29, worked hard to feel comfortable in her own skin. And while others may judge her appearance, she's confident that she deserves more than just a mediocre guy. Good for her. That's what this says. You got to be kidding me here. You know, she may be a great person. Okay. I got, if someone's overweight, it doesn't mean that they are a bad person. They could be the the nicest and coolest person, guy or girl, you know, intelligent, capable, all these things, but don't, don't kid yourself. Okay. Especially if you're a woman and you're trying to attract men, men are, we're visual creatures. Okay. That's our primary thing that's going to get our attention and, and attract us, your looks. A lot of women don't like this and they say it's, you know, it's just shallow and superficial. Well, guess what? Until you have one of those between your legs, you're not going to understand that how it works. Okay. It's kind of the same thing how a lot of guys get upset because a lot of women want guys that actually have an income and make good money and all that. And they're attracted to guys that have money and wealth and all that. Okay. It is what it is. Okay. They're wired that way, and we're wired this way. But in this regard, don't get so delusional and think that you have a shot and make us out to be the bad guy if we're not interested in you. 
She says, uh, Megan tried everything to lose weight. Throughout her teens and early 20s, Megan says she went to great lengths to try and slim down, doing everything from Atkins, keto, and paleo diets to even trying to starve herself to hopefully drop weight. Nothing was working, and she felt miserable and knew she needed to make a change. Well, you know what? I know what it's like to be overweight. For a brief period of time when I was a kid, from uh, about 10 and a half years old to about 12 years old, 12 and a half, give or take, I gained a bunch of weight. I was a chubby little fucker, okay? We moved from California to Pennsylvania to a small town. It was like night and day difference, okay? My dad retired. He was way older than me. He was a doctor. He, he was way older than my mom. And he was done with, with Los Angeles and all the traffic and all that. He wanted the quiet life out in the country where my mom grew up, okay? And when I moved there, all the kids hated me because I was from California and they were from a small town where pretty much it consisted of farms and factories. It was very blue collar, diners everywhere. They didn't like me. So I became a loner and I basically watched TV and cartoons and ate Doritos and I got chubby as hell. And I know what it was like and I hated it. And uh, the big mo moment for me was in sixth grade in the gym class when we had to do pull-ups and uh, sit-ups and I could only do two pull-ups, barely. And I could barely do any sit-ups and I felt like a loser and the girls were watching. At that point then, that's it. I did what I had to do. I rode my bike everywhere. I was started lifting weights at 12 years old. And then fortunately, I started eating better. That was a definite part of it. And then I had a puberty hit. I had a growth spurt and I went from being five feet tall to five foot 10 in one year. And kind of like an accordion, sh stretched me out. Okay. Now, I now obviously I didn't have any medical issues that held me back, but the thing is I made effort to lose the weight. So I understand what it feels like, but you got to try everything. And she says she tried stuff here. Well, then you keep trying. You don't give up. There are ways. You know, there are people that have medical issues like thyroid and things like that, but obviously actions can be taken. But by and large, most people nowadays are just too lazy to change their diet to get some exercise, okay? If you want to make a change, you got to do it. But now we have this whole thing like basically love yourself, big, gigantic, and huge, and that's okay. Well, no. I mean, you're, you're going to have serious health risks later on in life, if not actually sooner, depending, diabetes, heart disease, just to begin. So if you're going to go out promoting this, you're only going to get people to think that it's okay too, and they're going to suffer those problems. It's bullshit, and that's why I'm calling it on it. Anyhow, I had to say that little rant, give that little history about me to show you, uh, you know, I get it. I was once chubby too. I wasn't large and in charge like, like her, but I was overweight and it sucked, but I took action. She goes on. Just before she was due to get a gastric bypass, she discovered body positivity. Ah, so she was going to take the medical procedure that changed her, but she found body positivity. Inspired by the, the likes of Tess Holliday and other women in body positivity movement and realized that there was nothing wrong with her the way she was. Tess Holliday, she's using Tess Holliday as her inspiration here. I don't know if you guys know who Tess Holliday is. You can look her up and you can, uh, you'll can you figure out real quick. Tess Holliday, literally, she could literally go to the zoo and walk past the elephant enclosure and they, the elephants would be like, God damn, that bitch makes us look skinny. That's how big Tess Holiday is. Okay, that's not a role model to look like that. Good Lord. She says, being 300 pounds had nothing to do with her worth, and she was tired of feeling like it did. I never had plus-size role models in my life growing up. I never had someone who was plus-size who was so successful saying, your current body is not only fine, you can celebrate it. You got to be kidding me. That's not a role model. A role model is someone that was once in a bad situation, let's just say very overweight, and they took action, whatever had to be done, trying and trying and trying, many methods until finally found a way to make it happen and then become successful. That is a positive role model, not someone that basically stayed overweight and basically said, well, I love myself and that's that and made everybody say, oh, well, I don't have to do anything. It's kind of like somebody who was, uh, who's broke and is bankrupt basically saying, hey, being bankrupt's okay. Having no money's okay. You can just mooch off others. That's not a role model. A role model is someone that had hard times, went bankrupt, but then took action, turned their lives around, became a success, made a lot of money. That's a role model, not like this. But today's world is completely warped, so this is what we have. It goes on... Um, Knowing how much Tess has helped me with my journey made me realize that if I post pictures of myself normalizing things, society says fat girls can't do like wearing a bikini and dating attractive men. My goal is to be a role model I needed when I was younger. 
that's not a role model, honey, okay? Putting your pictures of yourself, 300 pounds of you, in a bikini on Instagram, ugh, okay? Again, she may be a really nice person, but let's let's not get out of reality here. I mean, this is, we're in fucking la-la land, guys. She goes, uh, continues, moving to New York changed Megan's life. Megan decided to leave her boyfriend and job behind and move to New York for a fresh start. She actually left a guy behind that wanted to be with her in spite of her being 300 pounds. See? It changed everything. As a plus-sized woman, life in New York has been a complete turnaround for how things were in the past. My life before I moved to NYC could be described as dull. I was unmotivated to make any changes in my life, mostly due to fear, and therefore very unhappy. She said, I was in a miserable job as a bank cashier making low wages. I was living with a boyfriend in a relationship that was not right for me. I was unhappy with my body because I did not know what happiness even was. Well, I'm glad she picked up and moved to a, a, another place to get a better job and things like that. That's that's great. I encourage everybody to do that. So, okay, good there. She wasn't happy with her job as a cashier. Okay, cool. But there's other things involved like the big U and also and ditching the guy. He says, the more she began to love herself, the happier she became. Megan continued, I would never have worn a bikini until I moved to New York and found my new mindset of self-love. In high school, I was so self-conscious of my body and truly believed I would never be able to have a boyfriend until I lost weight. I was too afraid to talk to guys in high school because how I felt about my body at that time. Well, again, I know it was like, I wasn't like her, but again, I know it was like to be chubby and the girls didn't like me and all that and it, it sucked, okay? And so... I don't want anybody hating themselves. They make this abundantly clear. But let's not, like I said, have this warped sense of reality and go promoting something that is going to give people major, major health problems down the road. Okay? Not that hard. But this is today's world. No doctor, like I said, no medical doctor would ever go for this. Okay? She continues, Some men, think, some men seem to think that she'll settle for anything, but they're wrong. Megan is regularly messaged by guys on social media where she actively posts selfies and other pictures of herself living her best life. Unfortunately, not all of them are up to par but seem to think that she owes them something because of her size. She says, I think some men believe they can message fat girls and that we are obliged to talk to them just because they're giving us attention. But they are so wrong, she insisted. And listen to this. She says, fat women do not have to settle for any man. We have plenty of amazing options. Too true. Well, again, there are guys that like the BBWs, the, the big girls out there, and okay, you know, to each their own. But still, it's small, okay? But this high, mighty attitude, only in today's world. She finishes up saying, as she so eloquently puts it, if it makes you happy, then go for it. You truly cannot make everyone happy, even if you're wearing a large paper bag hiding all your curves. So why not wear something that makes you feel amazing? Good advice all around. You can follow Megan on Instagram here. Well, if you guys want to check her out, go right ahead and you'll see what I'm talking about. But the point is this, guys, is that, you know, like I said in the beginning, if a guy wrote an article basically saying we're not going to settle for mediocre women or basically saying how guys have standards, we're the bad guy. We all know this. I'm preaching to the choir here. But a woman says about guys, and that's perfectly okay. It's celebrated and all. Bullshit, okay? We're allowed to have selection, too. We're not the bad guys for that. But this whole, again, the whole thing, this body positivity thing, I can't make it any more clear. I don't want anybody going around hating themselves or, or harassing anybody. I don't, I don't believe in any way, shape, or form because someone's overweight, they should be harassed or made fun of. Now, I know I'm making fun of her, and I'm making fun of that Tess Holiday only because they're trying to spread this unhealthy message in terms of not unhealthy about, like, the views on themselves, and not just the views of themselves, but just like, I don't want to be hating themselves, but this unhealthy idea, basically, it's okay to be 300 pound hippopotamus. No, because you're going to have major health problems later on down the road. And not to mention the fact that that will probably impact insurance prices for the rest of us because of people like that. And also potentially taxpayers, if she lives long enough to tap into other things that taxpayers could pay for, for her bad health decisions. Okay. That I'm definitely against. But well, this is the sense. It's crazy, okay? But at the end of the day, this is today's world. But I'm going to talk about this stuff, and I may not be popular about it, but I don't think I'm the only one here that thinks these things. So anyhow, guys, that'll be a funny little thing to share. So be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.